from Las Vegas, it's The Q. Covering EMC World 2016. Brought to you by EMC. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to theCUBE here in Las Vegas for EMC World 2016. Always happy when you can dig into the practitioners, understand what's really going on. Happy to have on the program for the first time, Esteban Rubens, who's the core IT architect and product manager uh, with Fujifilm Medical Systems USA. Thank you for joining us. Sure, it's good to be here. All right, if, could you, for our audience, give us a little bit, you know, your role and uh, what, what your organization does. Sure, so Fuji Medical is the US subsidiary of Fujifilm uh, Medical, you know, overall, worldwide and we deal in medical imaging, software mostly. So what people call PACS, RIS, VNA, Vendor Neutral Archive. So it's all related to acquiring, storing, processing images uh, for you know, patient images in healthcare. So we deploy our software worldwide and uh, you know, my role specifically is to architect storage solutions and you know, I recently acquired also uh, the other pieces of the core IT, so compute, hyperconvergence, operating systems, virtualization, et cetera. So basically everything that goes around you know, to make a solution. Yeah, so you know, one of the things we look at and talk to, to, to users about is that whole digital transformation. And of course, uh, you know, I think of Fuji and it was like, well, there's, there's a company that understands digitization. I mean, you know, there, there, there's no film anymore, you know, everything's online. Uh, t tell us, you know, wh wh how, how much is kind of the, the software uh, and digitization just, you know, the, the fabric of what your business does? It's the core of what we do. If you compare Kodak and Fuji, which were basically uh, almost the same type of company, uh, and actually Kodak had invented some of the technologies that we use now, and they didn't realize that they had to jump to the digital world in the 80s, well, they're basically not out there anymore. And Fuji embraced uh, dig digitalization for both consumer products like digital cameras, but also for medical imaging, and Fuji's thriving. So it's really a testament of the, the vision people had probably you know, 30 years ago to realize that that's the, that was the way to go. All right, yeah. could, could you sketch out for us just kind of the, the, the breadth of what you touch, how many locations, you know, what, what software products, you know, what, what's under your purview? So I think worldwide we have many thousands of customers. Uh, in the U.S., probably I would say over a thousand, I'm not really sure. Our customers are hospitals, hospital groups with many hospitals. There are also imaging centers. Uh, there's a large population of reading groups where hospitals can't afford or don't have radiologists on staff all the time, so they send their images obviously all digitally out to be read, interpreted, and they get the reports back. So that's the universe of, of our customers. And even though I work in the US primarily, uh, we are the global source for all our medical informatics products, which are uh, coded here in the U.S. So I uh, also work globally, giving direction to a lot of other Fuji medical companies. Yeah, you, you talked a little bit. You said, you know, I, I used to run storage. Now I have everything around storage. <laughs> that, that's a complicated set of tasks to take care of. Um, you know, you've you've got some experience now with some of the converged infrastructure products. Talk about how important that is to you, or what? How has that changed the complexity of, of having to manage all those things? It's hugely important, it's changed everything, and I think it's going to, first of all, it's going to speed up our business. It's going to make us more efficient, it's going to help us deliver better patient care for our customers, which is ultimately what everything is about, is yeah. what we do. Uh, Hyperconvergence, particularly, helps us not have to deal with a lot of details when we're deploying. Uh, our customers prefer that too, you know, not to have to stick build uh, every infrastructure, uh, moving away from islands, even though virtualization had brought about a, lo a lot of you know, synergies uh, in terms of using centralized resources, with hyperconvergence, you don't even have to worry about deploying the different pieces because it's all done automatically through orchestration and uh, crucially, combining the uh, compute and storage and also virtual networking with NSX, that makes everything a lot simpler to deploy. And so that's what we're looking for, really. Okay, so is this something you're putting in these customer locations, or you know, what, what's We're both the putting it in customer locations and using it internally. So we have validation labs, uh, we have testing labs, so we, uh, we were actually in the beta program because, so we, we've been doing convergence for a while. We, uh, 
had looked at uh, vBlock initially, but that wasn't perfect for us. So when this came about and the opportunity to look at the uh, VX Rail, we jumped at it because it was exactly what we're looking for. So it's kind of interesting that it's not just for customers, but it's also, it applies to our internal use cases as well. Yeah, you, you talked about uh, you know, medical image sharing, you know, collaboration with doctors. How has that changed you know, over time? You know, it used to be you'd, get a big, you'd break an arm, you'd get a big film, right. or you, know, you did an MRI and you're trying to, like how is, how is all that collaboration sharing and, and how does that change your world? We're in the middle of a revolution with uh, image sharing, yep. particularly as something called VNA has come along, uh, that stands for Vendor Neutral Archive, and there, there are a lot of initiatives out there to, to make that sharing easier. Even in the US, uh, given that we have a lot of islands because there's a lot of private and, and public healthcare organizations as opposed to say Europe or, or Australia where they have more public healthcare, here we have to bridge those uh, you know, divides between organizations, so we need technology to make that easier. So uh, even now, there's really a, a big gap between what people would like to do and what they're able to do. So that's where we're driving towards, right, with our VNA in particular, so that not only is it easier for a doctor at Hospital A to see images acquired at Hospital B that is not part of the Hospital A's group, but also for patients, because patients typically don't even have access to their own imaging, which is kind of crazy if you think about it, but uh, it, even today, if you go get a, a CAT scan, it's probably hard to get those images, but the people who are currently adopting VNAs see that it's a lot easier to have that done, and it, it creates not only better outcomes for patients, but everybody's more satisfied, both patients and practitioners. Yeah. No, so security and uptime have to be two, two important pieces. Can you talk about how those fit into the infrastructure that you deploy? So uptime obviously is, is vitally important, right? A lot of our customers are level one trauma centers or you know maybe level two, whatever, but they need to be constantly up. Uh, they don't really have the, the luxury of having downtime. Uh, down, unplanned downtime can mean uh, shutting down an ER, which is huge, D diverting ambulances, right? Not being able to accept trauma cases. So uh, hyperconvergence helps us with that as well because it makes everything more tightly integrated and therefore uptime improves. And security uh, is sort of a multi-pronged approach, right? So our, our products have some security, then we have some security in the US, we have some security in the networking layer and the uh, virtualization layer as well. Uh, encryption is becoming more and more important for everyone. Uh, the DOD for military sites is always at the forefront of technology requirements and they pretty much have decided that uh, everything has to be encrypted now, which is the way that all the commercial sites are going to go in the future, but uh, it's, it's very important also because there have been very significant breaches and we know that there are some uh, foreign countries that are very interested in acquiring uh, healthcare information, so we have to be very vigilant, both as an ISV, as a software vendor, and also as a, an integrator, essentially, of our own products. All right, so, you know, you, you guys are, you said you were in the beta program for this. So, I mean, early adopter, uh, you know, when you think of, about the medical industry, I mean, there, there's kind of that balance of, you know, there's budgetary issues, there's all the governance compliance. You know, what leads you, you know, how, how do you have the freedom to, you know, look at these new solutions? It's true that healthcare is very conservative yeah. in general, but at the same time, you have this other drive towards uh, ever greater uptime and, you know, the requirements that not only doctors but patients have put on the system. So for us, it's very simple. We are always the leader in IT for medical imaging. So even though sometimes uh, it takes a little work to, to work with our customers and, and to help them along, we are the trusted advisors when it comes to technology solutions. So we always want to be in the leading edge, even if people are not ready to adopt things yet, we want to be ready to talk to them about them as opposed to having customers expect us to be there and us not being there. Yeah, I, you know, you talked about converged infrastructure making your life simpler. Obviously that's going to reduce some cost around delivering IT. Have you, have you been able to, to figure out how to apply that as, as cost of patient delivery or, or sort of business level metrics yet for, for this, this change that you're making? Sure, for, for our customers, it's, it's immediately obvious, right? Because not only are they able to expend less capital money, but also the project timelines shrink. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So for them, it's not just the simple uh, expenditure as a, as a metric, but also how long it takes to deploy a new system or how long it takes particularly to upgrade a system. Yeah. So for them, uh, it, it's, a lot of it is more subjective, it's based on customer satisfaction, their own customers, yeah. who are maybe radiologists or other clinicians, and patients. So we see that already because it's very clear when we're deploying a project, when things can be done much more quickly and they can use our products that much more quickly as well. Okay. So that execution time turns into dollars and cents for them, obviously. Oh, yes. Yeah. How do things like software as a service or public cloud fit into your IT? We actually have a cloud arm, uh, we call it the Synapse Cloud. Uh, we offer several services ranging from uh, Cloud DR, where we store second copies of images, to fully hosted solutions, to uh, even for some customers we act as their DR site, where we do replication. Uh, so it, we know that's the future, that's where most uh, healthcare organizations are going to go. We are starting to see a lot of healthcare organizations uh, explicitly say that they have a, a cloud first strategy, which even a year ago didn't happen. So we know it's going to be, the, the pace of that requirement and adoption is going to be accelerating. So that's why we not only need to work with uh, both public, private, and hybrid cloud providers, but we build clouds for our customers and we offer cloud service. Right. And what, what's the stack underneath that? Is that, do you, do you go to somebody else's data center? You know, what, what do you build? We are totally flexible. That We don't push anyone to do anything. That's really one of our main go-to-market strategies and, and value adds where we don't tell people they have to do something specific so uh, we can deploy a gateway so that they can go to an S3 based cloud. We can uh, provide a, a, a CIFS SMB share where they can write images to. So it, 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 we, we pride ourselves in being open like that. So it sounds like you're getting to the point where you're going to deliver the best technology, you're not necessarily trying to lock people in, you have to, I would guess, competitively, uh, to be able to do that. Is that, you know, you talked about it in file format, but cloud and everything. Well, and also because it's a competitive advantage for us. Yeah. You know, many of our competitors don't do that. They're very rigid in what customers have to adopt, so certainly for us, not only do we think it's the best approach, but it's also something that makes business sense. Gotcha. All right, so uh, it's your first time at EMC World. It's, it's no, early no, in the no. show. So, um, so, no, you've been before? I've been here. Oh, okay, so so maybe you could share, You know, what, what do you get out of coming to these shows? Is it talking with your peers? Is it getting deeper on product? For me, it's uh, meeting the people who, who create the products. You know, going to sessions and talking to people who are responsible for, for developing things that I, I architect, and that's huge. And being able to have one-on-ones with people who then will go back and uh, make changes to the product or uh, request uh, features that may be taken into consideration. I mean, that is impossible to find really anywhere else. All right, well, Esteban Rubin, Fujifilm Medical, appreciate you joining us. We'll be back with lots more coverage here at EMC World 2016. You're watching theCUBE.